What's up? We're back with another episode of Still Potable, and they're back. The Celtics are. After their preseason opener, a 107-103 to win against the Denver Nuggets. There was a time there in the fourth quarter when I'm not sure anyone really knew the exact score. Maybe <laughs> maybe guys on the court realized it was wrong on the scoreboard. Um, I thought the Nuggets went ahead. They didn't really go ahead. They actually pulled themselves within one. It was weird, but that doesn't really matter because what really matters is how the Celtics played, the developments the Celtics showed, and I thought, even though they didn't play well, it was still a promising start. It definitely was. And this is, we should say how I run today, this is the free episode of Still Potable here. So you can catch this on the CNS YouTube. And we're brought to you by Prize Picks and Game Time. But yeah, the, I guess, to be honest, Jay, just... Do you want to start with the starters? Like, how, how what, what are the order of operations we want to go through? Let, here? Let's go, let's go starters first because yeah, they play no real basketball. Uh, Al Horford sat out, Joe Mazzulla told reporters in Abu Dhabi that it was just managing him, uh, just rest. Um, good, which, yeah, <laughs> two, two, two recent games max as for him, small as possible. He's already going to be doing too much with no Chris Porzingis for a while. Luke Cornett started with the normal four starters. They played the entire fourth quarter. Uh, Xavier Tillman subbed in for Luke Cornett at times, but it was just the starters early. They played most of the first half. Um, I think I, – I was impressed by Tillman, man. I was. Good. I was. I, he had off-season surgery on his knee, and he talked about how it would swell up on him last season and how he didn't feel right. He looked to me like he was more mobile. He fired a three from above the break on his first touch, and it didn't go in, but he later made two corner threes, finished two for three. I just liked the way he was moving. I think while Porzingis is out, he could be pretty important for the Celtics. Yeah, I think we never fully knew. Like Even when they traded for him last year, Jay, like he, what, he sat out like three or four weeks. Cause that knee yeah. was bothering him. And then he just, it was, it was in just an ongoing struggle the rest of the year of like, it feels fine. Then it, it blows up on him. And so whatever he got done, we don't know if it's going to sustain, but it, it, he looks like a different guy from a mobility standpoint, a guy that's in his mid twenties again. And the Tillman of two or three years ago was a factor, was a pretty big factor for that Memphis team and uh, saw some big minutes in those spots. So it's clear now that he's, you know, Reserting himself in that center rotation, you know, behind Cornette out of the gate, but it wouldn't surprise me on nights when Al is out if if Tillman is your your closing center if he looks like this in um from a mobility standpoint. Because I think, like I said, if the three is there and then defensively the versatility he can present um, for his size on the perimeter, I think that can you know that's a it's a big boon for this team potentially. Yeah, and it's it's not. I don't trust that the three will stay. Like he's. He's always been a bad shooter throughout his career. Yeah. He was nine for 29 for the Celtics after getting traded there midseason. Hit a huge one in the finals, but like that was it. Um, he was mostly an offensive zero for, for them, honestly. Where it matters is like, can he get to a point where he just hits enough that he's not a zero? Can he be a little more mobile and finish a little better? Can he, because the defense, even when he wasn't moving that well, has always been great. He had two steals, a block today, spent some time credibly guarding Nikola Jokic. He could switch on the guards. And so it's important for him to be able to like just play well enough offensively that his defense is allowed to carry him on the court. Um, and I just thought, 
I thought he looked good. Um, and Cornette did too. Like they have a deep center rotation, which is good because Porzingis is hurt a lot and Al is 38 years old. But but having Cornette and Tillman as your third and fourth bigs is just that's a luxury in today's NBA. It really is. And Cornette, 11 rebounds. Um, the only, I think the only time where things got ugly for those to you guys say, it's like when, when Tillman, when we got the Nimi Tillman front line to start the second half. Yeah. That was, that yeah, was not, not sure that's one they'll play a lot during the regular right. season. Right. Exactly. But that, that, that's one you don't have to, but it, it is, you wondered, you know, heading into this camp, it's like, okay, you know, is Nimi like, is Nimi, is he going to push, is he going to push either of these guys for minutes? And I think the way these things both played out from a rotation standpoint in this game and just what we saw on the floor, the answer is, is no, like that's, it's a nice guy to have at the end of the bench, but Tillman and Cornette, I think on minimum deals always look like a bargain. And then if they can, again, give you this in 15, 20 minutes per night and more when needed upon, like when called upon, that's uh that's just going to be a really important part of sustaining this team for the long term and keeping Alan Porzingis ready to go for when this team needs the most. Yeah, and I wouldn't totally count out Nimi from earning minutes at some point. He does have, like, he produces when he's on the court, and he does have moments where you're like, wow, he does some pretty impressive stuff. But I'm with you. Like, those two guys are just, in Cornette and Tillman, they're just totally dependable. And Nimi is still, I don't know, you don't know it's what you get from possession to possession. Exactly. Um, the start of the game was just so sloppy. It was <laughs> so preseason. And it makes sense. Both teams had to fly 12 hours, or at least it was 12 hours from Boston to Abu Dhabi. And the the pra- practice just started a week ago. Like, they're as jet-lagged as jet-lagged could be. It was the furthest away from Boston the Celtics have ever played. I imagine it was the furthest from Denver the Nuggets have ever played. So we were always going to get sloppy basketball. But at the start, it was just, like, so ugly. Jalen Brown dribbled like straight into Jamal Murray and just got stripped. Uh, Jason Tatum's first pocket pass was intercepted and went the other way. Um, It was just kind of an ugly start, but I thought Derek White kind of snapped the Celtics out of it a little bit. He was just from the start, just locked in. Um, There was a, a play in the, like halfway through the first quarter, after he'd already made, I think he'd already stripped Aaron Gordon, but there was a play halfway through the first quarter where the Nuggets had numbers and he like rotated to one guy and then rotated to another and just like like single-handedly stopped the Nuggets from producing a, a good attempt on that possession. I just thought um and then he brought the Celtics back to life. And I thought after that that first like five minute stretch, they were much, much sharper, even though their starters didn't win their minutes. Yeah, Derek, I liked how just aggressive he was, too. Like, he was, and we saw a lot of this last year, just, like, when the shots were there, he was like, all right, I'm taking these. Um, But, yeah, for as sloppy as it was. Could he reach another level? It's, I, I, I think so, right? Because he was so good last season, but it was also his first season really where he was totally trusted, with the Celtics at least, where he was, like, totally trusted, they were like the end of game minutes are yours. Starting spot is yours. Point guard position is yours. And then he went and like, he's always been a guy who sort of one of his weaknesses, sort of a strength too, but one of his weaknesses is like, he's willing to play a background role. Um, But then his confidence just boomed. And then he goes, plays well in the Olympic, wins a gold medal on the Olympic team. Like I, I think that, that stuff could catapult him to even another level. It's a good point. And then you I mean you look at the start of this season, and it's like Porzingis is out. Drew and Al are old, older, and so it's like, hey Derek, we need you to be the number three option, and we need you to like run a fat a lot, and and even like from an offensive standpoint, like like now it's not like oh now you're finding your spots and stuff. No, now it's like no, you know you can do, and. You, you're going to get the open threes, but we know you can attack. We know you can set up guys and we trust you to do that with any guard out there. 
in the Eastern Conference on, on top of what he can bring from a defensive standpoint. So it is. It's like I think we'll f- we'll see. Like he could have the opportunities last year. Like there was All Star buzz. We talked about it at parts of last year of like, oh, can Derek White do it? But then ultimately, it's like, well, no, he's like, you just you're not gonna get the opportunities points wise to do that. I think this year he could actually have a legitimate shot because the those chances are going to be there for him now to put up between fifty to twenty points a night on a regular basis if he um, if he wants to. Yeah, and obviously the opportunity won't be a ton different than it was last season, although Porzingis will probably miss – will surely miss more games than he did a, a year ago. Um, but I just – I do think, like, for a guy like Derek White, who who really does, like, kind of take a back seat sometimes. Um, sometimes that's because he's willing to do it. Sometimes it's because the team put him in – put the ball in somebody else's hands. But, like, I really do think the confidence of playing for – the Olympics and coming off that year where he was just amazing from start to finish could, could push him to another level. Um, I just thought his compete level for a preseason game, he was flying around like Michael Porter jr. When he was dribbling, like Derek white was just right there <laughs> making sure that he couldn't even attempt a shot. He forced a travel on one possession where like he just kept like, he was just shadowed Michael Porter jr. And Michael Porter jr. Tried like some up fakes, Derek White was going nowhere. Just he traveled. Eventually, just just screwed up. Um, I thought Derek White just brought it. He really brought it. And like for for the first preseason game for the defending champs game that doesn't matter in Abu Dhabi, I just thought I was really impressed by the the edge that he brought to the game. Um, and I will say, Jay, on like White, obviously that during the, the entire both teams started. I think like. This was good effort for a preseason game. Yeah. Like both these, I mean, it might have been the, the fact they were playing each other or where they were, but like this wasn't half assing it. And the fact that they all knew that they were going to just play the first half and we got to see a good, like most of them played 18 minutes, which is a healthy chunk of time for a preseason game. But they, uh, they, you know, it, the game didn't matter, but we saw, I think, a lot more effort than we normally would in, in, the, in the preseason just based on the, the circumstances, which was yeah, nice. the Celtic, the Celtics had some awesome defensive plays. Jalen's block of Kanchar was just a monster block. Yeah. Um, Drew Holiday, it's like had some great moments against Aaron Gordon in the post. Jokic is just so good. Like he <laughs> hits, <laughs> the flip shots he hits are just insane. Um, and I thought I was actually impressed by the Nuggets, like they came into this season saying they wanted to shoot more threes and they couldn't nearly keep pace with the Celtics who shot 35 in the first half, 61 for the games. They were just long record most in the game. <laughs> yeah. Most, most they've ever taken. Um, and, but like Denver got them up too. And I think that's really important for them because their three point attempt rate was so far behind the other contenders and the other great offenses that, it could be a huge thing for them, especially if like Strother hits or uh, like one of their other young guys hits like and starts to make a difference. And Porter Jr. starts getting up more threes and Hunter Tyson, maybe who knows if yeah, he can he play. Um, but he looked pretty Sharp good. Shooter Russell Westbrook. Yeah. He had three. <laughs> don't expect that to continue. But <laughs> but I, I did. I was impressed by just their willingness to let it fly. Um Especially Jokic didn't even take one, but everybody else was just getting them up. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. Join over 10 million users and sign up today. Prize Picks invented the flex play, which means you can still cash out if your lineup isn't perfect. You can double your money even if one of your picks doesn't hit. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It is guaranteed. Folks, with the NBA season just around the corner, it's your chance to get in on the fun with prize picks. I know we're going to be picking Jason Tatum overs, Peyton Pritchard overs in the preseason. And so that's why you should go to prize picks today. Download the app today and use code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. That is promo code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize picks. Run your game. 
yeah, it seemed, and it is. And still, with them doing that, they still almost took, like, they took 50% of what the Seas took. And so yeah. they're, like, catching up on that front, and the Seas were just at warp speed at that amount because we haven't, you know, gotten to the, the bench yet. But uh, Payne Pritchard, uh, 13 field goal attempts, 12 threes. Just a preseason legend. Just eating it up. Eating it up up there. Preseason legend. He came in and immediately took a three from like 29 feet. Um, a bunch of his shots were like from that deep. Obviously, he just kind of does that. That's his range. The one two he took, he created a lot of space with like his shoulder, kind of did like a TJ McConnell drive <laughs> and then airballed it. Like didn't even come close. <laughs> I kind of enjoyed that given that the rest of his game was just splashing threes. Um, I thought the bench, I, I wasn't surprised that the bench looked good um, based on the comments Al said about Pritchard sort of setting the tone for the Celtics in the um, in like practices before practices start. So, and, and we know he's just a gamer. It doesn't matter to him that it's preseason. If he's on the court, he's going to be going warp speed. And so he, uh, He's a preseason legend. He averaged, he was third on the team in scoring last year behind, I think it was just Jalen and Jason, and led the team in scoring during the preseason opener. The guy just – he did miss a heave, though. He missed a heave. Inexcusable. Totally um, inexcusable. He, he got, but he got the the first half heave. It was like he got it and, and airballed it. It was a really, really tough one. He, he wasn't able to create a lot of separation on it. Um, they didn't really put him in a good spot, but the heave. But he, got, did, he, he did hit one at the end of the first quarter, though. The, yeah. the long, like the hold for one, though. So we'll give him credit, parts credit for that one. Um, six assists for him, too. Like for all the shooting he is there, like you like the creation. He, the kind of, he, I feel like he was really pushing the ball. We know that they want to play faster this year. And it seemed like it was a track meet at points in that first half where they just, both sides were just grabbing it off rebound, a lot of misses and then just going. And he was kind of front and center for a lot of that. So uh, still was sloppy, three turnovers. But I don't know, when you talk about like Derek White's next level, like Peyton Pritchard's next level is interesting to me too here because like we know, depending on how, if they want to go with some of these smaller lineup looks um, when, when Porzingis and Horford are out of games, like just going three guards with Pritchard um, at spots in a half might be, an appealing option in, I don't know, like, I don't know, crunch time situations, but just some, a situation where he could be, you know, pushing 20, 25 minutes in those games because he's just, you know, the the best player coming off the bench if he's out playing Hauser at that point. Oh, yeah. One of the questions coming into the preseason was how the Celtics would sort of handle the O'Shea Brissett role, uh, which he sort of sees toward the end of last year. I guess for most of last year, he was kind of the guy who played if they needed a perimeter guy behind Pritchard and Hauser. Um, and obviously, he didn't stay in Boston, still looking for a home. But who who fills that role? And tonight, it was Jaden Springer and Jordan Walsh playing. They started the second quarter. They played with this, the regular rotation guys during the first half. They clearly got the first crack at that sort of role. Um, we didn't see Baylor Shireman until much later in the fourth quarter. We didn't see Lonnie Walker until like basically mop up minutes with total end of the bench guys late in the fourth quarter. So as far as we're aware, all we've seen is just one preseason game. Jaden Springer and Jordan Walsh are in pole position to compete for those spare minutes at the end of the rotation. Um, and I thought both were pretty good, but also like the shooting is going to be a problem maybe for both of them. Um, Walsh did hit two, but I just thought like they both hesitated. They're both not natural shooters. They're, they both have a history of missing shots. And uh, so I, as, as, as impressed as I was with some of the stuff they did at the same time, it was like, yeah, but that could be an issue. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's certainly with anything for Jordan Walsh after summer league is a win today. And that's I think that was the 
going in, I thought it would be Shireman and Jane Springer kind of fighting for those minutes for so for him emerging already through the start of camp where he's in the spot that we think Baylor, a lot of people thought they were to be. And I think that that's somewhat of a big deal because that means I think he's had a probably had a solid camp to this point where he is first in line to get a crack at these minutes in a preseason game. But you're right. It's like if he's out there, if both of them are out there, like spacing wise, what defenses are going to do with those guys? Like even he took six attempts for Walsh, but he probably turned down like six more um, like open looks over the course. And of the some game. from the corner too. Yeah. Like you can't turn down a corner three in the NBA, but he and, and Springer both did it. And Springer did it like toward the end of the shot clock and ended up with a really poor opportunity after doing it. You just sometimes you just got to shoot it. Right. Um, but Walsh defensively, they had three blocks. Um, and just, I think he was very active on the offensive glass too. So a good, that's the kind of guy like you, that's how you are playing your role with this team. Like he just needs to be like an energy wild card off the bench. If he does get a chance like that. And that's, we saw a lot of that from him today. And what do you have? Like 20, 25 minutes played the most out of everyone. And it was by no means the perfect game. Um, and still has plenty of flaws, but was a, certainly a step in the right direction for him. And he had some good passes too. There was one play where, uh, Springer actually started off the sequence. He dr- drove baseline, drew help. I think he found Luke Cornett in the middle. Cornett swung it to the corner where Jordan Walsh was. He drove it, fed it back to Cornett for, for an assist. Um, Cornett got the bucket. And then there was another one that was really nice in the fourth quarter when some of the like lesser established guys were in there and Walsh drove to the paint turned around and found J.D. Davison behind him for for a three-pointer. And so you can sort of see the outline of, of Jordan Walsh where it's like he's probably going to be a, an impactful defender when he's on the court. Um, but if he could be that energy guy and then sort of be a connective piece with passing and a little bit of ball handling and stuff like that, then maybe it would work if he's in the, the Brissette role. And, or maybe you just – use him in that role and he's not necessarily as as impactful as Brissett was last season but you you put up with that because it's the growing pains of a really young kid who who does have some significant potential um for the most part I really like the way he played especially after summer league like you said it, to see him even in the mix for for a spot in the first half of the pre, first preseason game like that's a surprise. That's, that's promising. Yeah, I, I was I was surprised by that. And him and Springer, too. Wasn't necessarily surprised by Springer. Um yeah. but but yeah, that's that's a good start for both of them, I think. Um, probably in camp to to earn that. Uh not a good start. Growing for pains Baylor Shireman. <laughs> not a good start for <laughs> Baylor Shireman. I what was the low light, Jay? What was the low light? Was it the was it off the backboard? First shot. Top was it the ball. air ball? Or the air ball. Was it the pass that he fired at Nimi's head that went out <laughs> of bounds when <laughs> Nimi wasn't expecting it? Because why would Nimi be expecting to get the ball passed to him in that spot in transition? Yeah, he did have a steal. He did have nearly a charge taken. Um, he was called for a block instead. I think there will be much, much better days for Baylor Shireman. It's not the best sign that he didn't play until a few minutes left in the fourth quarter, but we've never really seen, I guess, Joe with, we've definitely never seen him with a first round pick, but we haven't really seen him try to like, like bring a young for a guy like that along. Like it, Good they point. didn't do that. They definitely didn't do that two years ago. They didn't do it last year. Like, I guess Nimi played some if you want to count Nimi, but he was in his third season. Right. Baylor's in a totally different situation where he's a first round pick in his first year. So we'll see how that process goes. We'll see if and when he earns minutes. He did not earn himself any more opportunities <laughs> during the preseason over. It was, it for was those so main drives. Ugly, he got it up though. He got, got him up. up. Got him up. Got him three up. Um yeah, I mean, he was like Drew, Drew Peterson was putting him to shame out there in terms Drew of Drew Peterson that, had a that, really good fourth I mean, quarter. He played the whole fourth quarter. Yeah, that whole fourth quarter offense kind of centered around him, and he was getting him up and looked good doing it 
again, because that's another guy again coming off the summer league that he had more downs and ups in that stretch. Um, but yeah, with Baylor and I don't know for all the for all the Lonnie Walker quote unquote buzz we have there in terms of like where he stands on this roster right now, just coming in for the last four minutes of the game, I think it kind of tells you of like, I mean, and I expect he's he's gonna play. There's gonna whether it's Sunday. Or next week, there's certainly going to be times where most slash all the starters are resting and he'll get his chances. But um, I still, I think, like, and so as far as you're like, oh, could, could he, Lonnie Walker, play his way into the rotation or something like that? And I, like, he's, he'll be surprised if he plays his way into a, a roster spot, um, at least at the start of the season at this point, it seems like, based on where he's at here. And because of the financial reality, he's going to have to have a good camp, a good preseason yeah. to put himself in the mix really to to earn a roster spot it it would take like 10 million dollars of luxury tax payments to keep him around it would take getting rid of the flexibility of having one open roster spot so he's kind of up against it and yeah which is why it's kind of stunning that he took this deal knowing those obstacles are there but maybe he kind of sees it as like I'm going to have to go to the G league anyway, probably. So like, I want to do it with a team that's good. I don't know. I guess we'll, we'll find out how this plays out, but it is like a, it's a tough climb for him for, from that standpoint. Yeah. There's not going to be a lot of opportunity for him. Um, and he, I mean, he, he played with like the, the main guys, the main Celtics guys. Yeah. And, and maybe that's how they envision him. I mean, that's right. He, he said the other day when he spoke to us that, he was told by Brad Stevens, you could spend some time in the G League, that he was told by Brad Stevens, your spot isn't guaranteed. Like, obviously, he's on an Exhibit 10 contract. By nature, those aren't guaranteed. But he knows, like, his job's in jeopardy and and not promised. And it certainly looked like that today, like, given how they used him or didn't use him at all during, like, any of the game when they were using their better players um, or their rotation guys or even like Baylor Shireman played the first seven minutes and change of the fourth quarter. And then Lonnie Walker came in for him, I believe, and played the rest. So he was playing with like just guys that nobody expects to do anything except go to Maine. So not great start for Lonnie. He might have a, a tough, tough climb to, to solidify a spot or, earn a spot i guess solidify isn't the right word there football season is back and it is your opportunity to get in on the action with game time game time has a new feature called game time picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier game time picks filters out all the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets Game Time Picks makes it easier to save on sports, concert, comedy, theater, and more. Any tickets that you want, you can get through the Game Time app. They have all-in pricing. This feature allows you to show the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. Seat views, panoramic views from the seat in the app before you buy. That comes with a lowest price guarantee, or if not, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference And then game time ticket coverage. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app today, create an account and use the promo code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code CLNS for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. Um, we can talk about the Tatum shooting at all. Yeah, probably for a reason. Um, three for seven. Three for right down the middle. Is it? <laughs> right down the middle. This we is knew it was going to happen. We knew it was going to happen. We knew it wasn't going to be like a, a seven for 12 where everyone was like, oh, my God, he's back. And it wasn't going to be like a one for nine. Oh, my God. Sky is falling. Just a three for seven. He was aggressive hunting his shot, though, for sure. Yeah. I feel like he I started the game was. looking for guys. And then, like you said, then he got into looking for his own shot over the court, the middle of that first quarter. And yeah, Covet had a couple of nice ones in transition pull ups. Um, 
was kind of the only other had some rhythm offensively over the course of this game. But I don't know. It's kind of wild. Just the 17 turnovers for the Celtics. That feels like very low based on 23 for the Nuggets. It was just a, a long, sloppy game. That, uh, But with some good effort levels, so it was still entertaining if nothing else for, for parts of it. Yep. And obviously there was great, like, it was going to be a super sloppy game in Abu Dhabi one week after starting practice. <laughs> if they had played it at a high level, yeah. it would have been totally insane. Um, let's get to just kind of let's run through whatever notes we have left. Luke Cornett tried like a 10 foot tip in <laughs> and just did not really come close. Uh, I don't know what that was all about. I think he was trying to tip it in, but he batted it at the rim from like 10 feet away. And it wasn't even close. I don't know why he tried it. It was ambitious. He also had another tip in that was sort of similar. Um, so that was like <laughs> only fault I had in his game was just way too aggressive on tip ins. Um, Derek White had an awesome move to score past Jokic on the fast break. Like just, just an awesome, awesome move. Um, sort of hesitated, went by him. Obviously, Jokic isn't the best fast break defender but just a really really nice play uh it's not Celtics basketball until drew holiday does something totally indefensible and <laughs> he pulled up for a three that hit the backboard crashed into the backboard and was just just a wild drew holiday shot like those those weird moments he has with- i missed it i love those it was awesome yeah i, I missed those two and i was i was very happy though not surprised that we were able to witness one in the the first preseason game. Um, Springer came in and immediately played point guard. I, I kind of liked his patience at times. He uh, there was one drive he didn't make the shot, but he drove and the the Nuggets didn't really send a lot of help, so he couldn't spray it to the perimeter. And he just kind of patiently worked and muscled his guy and created like a little seven or eight footer and. That's the type of stuff that I think he can do. That's the type of stuff that um, will help him sort of contribute offensively. And so I liked what I saw from him from a patient standpoint, from a passing standpoint. The shot still has a long, long way to go. But there's there's a lot to like with Jaden Springer. He also, like, he got beat by Russell Westbrook a couple times. But when he just moves his feet, it's so hard to screen him. He like stays attached to guys. Like there's literally no space between Jaden Springer and the guy he's guarding a lot of the time. It's wildly impressive how how well he moves laterally. And to combine it with the strength he does, he he has a chance to be such a great perimeter defender. And that's probably why he's, you know, competing for, for minutes right now or seemingly competing for minutes right now. Yeah. And he's so young. From that standpoint, even though this is his fourth year in the league coming up, like it is the you can see the entry, you can see why the they're willing to give up a decent second round pick for him last year. And um now this is clearly a, a huge season for him as he enters um free agency this summer, and then clearly the Celtics have a use for him if he can show he's worthy of those minutes out of the gate before than his defense. Um did did you have anything else to in your notes? I had, I love the, uh, they tested the new rule of the challenge at the end of the first quarter there. <laughs> yes, they did. They sure did. Joe was pissed. Joe was pissed. I don't, I think, because it is, it's like, right? And that was like the perfect tour sort of play to do that on. And I, But this is good. That's that's A plus decision making by um, Matt Rounds and Joe there to go for that because it's like, is figure out what they're actually meaning by these type of calls. Like what? And I guess I don't know what the defense was for that, where it was clear that White got fouled, but maybe they said he was turned to pass before he got fouled. I don't know. But that was fascinating to see that kind of go into motion. Yeah, it looked on the replay like they didn't necessarily have great angles of White's arm getting hit while he passed. I don't know. That would be my guess for why it wasn't overturned. But Joe was pissed. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> and Der- Derek was pissed too, especially at the initial call. Derek just looked so surprised that that there was no foul call and it was called out of bounds on him. Um, the only other thing I want to know is uh, there was a hilarious sequence with Jordan Walsh where uh, 
He missed a three, hustled back, and had a great, great block at the other end, like scampered back in transition to, to make a great block, then caught it in transition and just bricked another three. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, she's like, all right, there's, there's good, there's bad. He's still raw, but I, I really did think that he played uh, a pretty impressive game. He did a lot of things well, including he and Springer both had – some big, big offensive rebounds. And I, like they are the type of physical, or I guess he's not super physical, but like gifted athletically wings that could help the Celtics on the glass with corner crashes if, if, if they're both in the rotation. So promising stuff there. Yeah, promising scrappy stuff. athletic. Scrappy and athletic. Yeah. That, that's a nice combination. Um, Beyond that, Jalen had that nice dunk. Oh, yeah. Half. We didn't even know, uh, note that before. Probably should have spoken yeah, about that. Yeah, that was pretty – I mean, it's kind of like run of the mill for him at this point. But um, yeah, that was certainly his highlight of the day. And uh, Drew's highlight, obviously, 12 minutes for him. They kept his – the starters played bigger minutes first half, like him, them just keeping his minutes down because he's old. And, and, um, and he played in the Olympics. And he played in the Olympics. Didn't get a lot of rest. Yeah, there's right. – um, and then J- I thought JD had a pretty decent game. Like for the man can throw an alley oop. I mean, can throw the an alley oop. That was some can pretty throw an alley oop. Pretty feeds. Like Terry Rozier should have called <laughs> JD Davison for pointers. Terry was probably the worst alley oop thrower I've ever seen for the Celtics, especially for a guard who could throw some nice passes. It would just never worked. But JD, yeah. he's aggressive with it. <laughs> like to the point where sometimes it's totally insane, yeah. but but he throws. He can really put it put it up there where where only his guy can catch it. Sometimes. I love that. Where are you in or out in Westbrook and Denver? I'm out. Definitely out. <laughs> I've I've been out on Russell Westbrook for a while now. The one thing though that could work is he's a good cutter when he sure. wants to be. Um, and I think, like, if you can cut around Jokic, that could work. But they're trying to make more threes, take more threes. Just seems like they're going in one direction, he's going in another. I don't know. I'm not convinced he's going to be helpful. But he's a legend. <laughs> legend. We're legendary too. Thank you for listening here on the CLNS Network. This is a free show. We will be recording shows every Monday through Friday on the Still Potable feed. That's patreon.com slash still potable if you want to subscribe. Again, this is brought to you by Prize Picks and Game Time. Come find us. Come stick with us. It's going to be a fun season. Still bottle, still bottle, still bottle, still bottle. Oh yeah! Go down from eating and drinking and, and all that uh, wild stuff.